Hi, in this video we're going to look at how we can set up QuickBooks Online Payroll, which is powered by KeyPay, doing a very basic setup on a fictitious business called the Friday Over Cocktail Bar. We'll do is some basic business configuration, followed by setting up an employee on a salary, and also setting up an employee that's paid on an hourly basis. To configure payroll, first of all click on employees from the left hand menu, and then click sign up for KeyPay. You'll be redirected to a form. Some of this will already be pre-filled from your settings in your QBO file. Go ahead and fill these out and when you're finished, click sign up. A lot of the initial business data is created for you. When using QuickBooks Online Payroll powered by KeyPay, Everything you'll need is on the front dashboard view. You can view employees, recent pay runs, look at approved leave, look at specific reports for payroll, and deal with payroll settings. In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the basic payroll settings. If you click Details, a lot of these settings transfer from the form that we just filled in. You can also optionally select what working week you want to use. In this case, I'm going to leave it as Monday to Sunday. You can decide whether you want to allow SMS notifications, which can attract an additional charge and whether or not you want to automatically update super rates as they change in Australia between now and 2025. When you finish with those settings, click Save. The next screen is your ABA settings. Here we can create one or more ABA files as you wish. You'll type a BSB number and an account number. And if you get the BSB number wrong, it will validate and tell you to check it. Give it an account name, usually the same as the business. With the character limit. Also a three digit financial institution code. Some of these details you may have to check with the bank to, to ascertain. Select a lodgement reference, say wages, for the period ending, a certain date. The name of the user, which is usually the same as the business. And a six digit code, representing the APCA user ID. Again, it may be relevant to check with your financial institution of what that number should be. Optionally include a self-balancing transaction, and you can put a reference on that as well. Not all banks need that include self-balancing transactions, so again, check with your bank for details. And you can also decide whether you need to merge multiple payments for the same account into a single transaction. So that's relevant to do with some providers like Commonwealth Bank. When you finish, click Save. The next screen we're going to look at is the ATO Supplier Settings. Because we've already filled this in in details, we can go to the bottom and click Copy from Business Settings. Here, a lot of these settings will flow through like ABN, name and address. Signature name is important if the name of the person that's going to lodge payment summaries is different from the person that's the contactable person in KeyPay. I'm going to write my name here again but you could optionally write a different name. Decide whether you as an employer is exempt from fringe benefits tax under 57A of the Fringe Benefits Tax Assessment Act 1986. This is usually more relevant for not-for-profits and charities, but just double check if you had that exemption. If you do, click yes, and it'll show separately on the payment summary. In most cases, it's gonna be no. The final step here is to do electronic lodgement. We offer the ability to lodge tax file declarations and payment summaries direct from the software. To do this though, we do need to contact the ATO and let them know that KeyPay is going to be the software provider that we're going to use. If you call the number displayed and identify yourself with the ATO, or use the business portal that's provided to every business in Australia, you have to quote the software provider and the software ID to KeyPay. They register that, and then you go back into this section of the platform and click Enable Electronic Lodgement. Once all that's done, you can click Save. The next screen we're going to look at is Payslips. Here you can upload a logo. We recommend no larger than 150 pixels by 350 pixels, and that'll display on your payslip. As well as that, you can show extra detail on the payslip. You can show decide whether you you can decide whether you want to include 
the external ID of the employee. Maybe it's an ID represented to the employee in another system. And also line notes, which gives a more detailed view of things like location, start and finish times, and any notes that have been added by the employee for each earnings line on the payslip. You can decide who the email comes from for the employee and optionally append a custom message when you send the payslip. Click save when you're finished. Next we're going to look at locations. Locations in KeyPay map to what we call classes and locations in QuickBooks Online. If you're new to QuickBooks Online, you first of all may want to set up one or more locations or classes to use. I'm going to click close, go to the settings cog, click account and settings, click advanced, then make sure that I'm choosing on for both classes and locations if I intend to use them. Click done when you're finished. Next we want to click on the cog icon again, click all lists, and then select locations. Click new and give it a name. Repeat that for any other locations you want to track. When you finish that, you can repeat that process for classes, and then return to the employees tab on the left hand side, go to payroll settings, and go to locations. From here you can sync the locations in KeyPay with the locations from QuickBooks Online. Click import QuickBooks locations. And there you have it. You'll notice that there's no state filled in. It's important to fill in a state if you want to utilize the public holidays in KeyPay. Click bar one and select a state. And repeat that process. Next we'll look at chart of accounts. Because of the tight integration that KeyPay has with QuickBooks Online, we do set you up with a chart of accounts without you having to provide any further detail. However, you can customize these settings, add things like expense categories that might point to different expense accounts in the profit and loss, and also pay categories that you might want to separately identify in the profit and loss. Things like bonuses and overtime are common examples. When you finish those settings, click save and click close to return to the home menu. Next we're going to look at pay categories. Pay categories are the things that actually appear on the payslip itself. So if we want to add our own in, we can do that. Do so by clicking add and giving it a name. You can decide what kind of unit that is. Hourly, annually, fixed or daily. I'm going to use fixed in this case. Decide whether there's any super involved. Decide whether it gets taxed or it's exempt from tax. If it's an hourly pay category, you can also decide whether it accrues leave or not, and whether or not we exclude it from W1 in the journals. You can also decide where it shows on the payment summary. In this case, I want to show it separately as an allowance. We also have the idea of linked pay categories, which stops you from having to separately calculate a rate if it's tied to a base rate. In this example, we've got some overtime pay categories underneath casual ordinary hours that reference the base rate but apply 125%. I'm going to add a link pay category in here and call it casual public holiday. And repeat the process above. Here I'm going to make it a penalty rate of 150%, which effectively makes it double time and a half. If you intend on paying staff using a salary, it's a good idea to create an annual base pay category and use that as the employee's primary pay category. To do so, click add, give it a name, fill out these details, but you want to make the units annually, and click save. Finally, we're going to go and set up some work types. Work types are used on the timesheet and point to a specific pay category or leave category. For example, I'm going to create one called casual 
weekday hours, which is available to selection for the employee. I'm going to make it available to casuals and select a pay category that should be used. In this case, casual ordinary hours. You might also want to create other ones that point to penalty rates. In this case, I'm going to create one called casual Saturday hours. And point that to the pay category called casual Saturday. Repeat that process for as many work types as you need. 